Good evening and thank you for joining us to this BIS career webinar organized in collaboration with BioCAD. Before we start, I will go through some good practices that will help us all have a smooth online experience. Make sure that your microphone is muted all of the time. Secondly, if during the discussion you have any question, please use, use the chat that you have just right side of your screen. Additionally, we have experienced some problems using this platform this morning during the breakdown session. So please, if, when it's the time, stay calm and we'll go through the process. Before presenting today's session, I would like to take this opportunity to put this webinar in context and introduce the framework that BIS is putting together in the area of career development. We are developing a series of actions for our researchers in order to support professional progression beyond academia. We want to promote multiple pathways that scientific talent may undertake along the professional career. BIS is highly committed to promote that scientific talent has an impact beyond the academia by adding value into other sectors such industry, public policy, and education. For that, BIS will be organizing a series of webinars to share the experience of researchers who have continued with their professional path in different roles and sectors, and share useful and necessary information on how to approach these terms in, in careers. As well, we're organizing webinars at this one to share some academic programs that are very efficient in promoting this, transition, this career transition. We are, of course, open to ideas and suggestions of topics which satisfy your interest. So feel free to reach out to us at any time with your comments. And now, let's go ahead and get started. This session will introduce the Design Health Barcelona, the D-Health Barcelona. It's a program um, especially designed for the scientific community. The D-Health Barcelona which has been run by BioCAD since 2013, is a six-month full-time pro postgraduate program aimed at developing future entrepreneurs and healthcare innovators. It draws inspiration from Stanford University, and it has, and it will, the, the first edition will take place from April to October 2021. And BioCAD is offering two spots at half the usual tuition cost to members of the BIS community. Indeed, the same Health Barcelona has received many fellows coming from researchers from BIS. Today, we have the pleasure to share their experience with two of them, Dr. James, a postdoctoral researcher at ICFO, and Dr. Petra, a former postdoctoral researcher at CRZ. And thanks to Aurea, an innovation project manager at BioCAD, who will share the academic program and also guide the session from now on. Thank you, Aurea. Great. Thank you very much, Nuria, for, for the introduction. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, before we start, like me, I would like to, to thank the Barcelona Institute of Science and Technology, you know, this, and Nuria especially for, for giving us this time and organizing this. So yeah, the, the main goal, the, the idea of today's session is that you, um, that we can present you the, the program uh, and the biodesign methodology for innovation in medtech. But I would say that above all that, um, the goal of this is that for you to, for us to present you with an alternative career option no, towards entrepreneurship and innovation in uh, healthcare. So yeah, this is the agenda of what is going to be this, this afternoon. We will start, I would say that the second, session is divided in two parts. In the first one, we are going to have like a brief introduction uh, into the biodesign methodology. And after that, we are going to experience uh, in, in one hour what the fellows of the health do in six months, actually. Um, so for that, we're going to split in three different breakout rooms. And for that, I will have the, the help of, of two of my colleagues at BioCAD, both of them experts in biodesign, uh, Raquel Riera, which is the director of the Acceleration and Talent at BioCAD, and Judith Juan, which is also an innovation program manager at BioCAD, and also a former fellow of the, of the, of the program. Uh, after that, we will uh, all come back again to the main room. We'll have five minute break. And after that, we will finish the, the webinar with, um, as Nuria was saying, uh, we will have like um, 
the opportunity to hear the, the experience of two former fellows of the program that were former uh, researchers at, at one of the centers of BIST that will share with you uh, their experience and also what they, are, what they are doing right now. And with that, we will finish with, uh, with the Q&A. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so yeah, let's start with this brief introduction as I was telling you on, on the biodesign. For that, I think that to understand biodesign, we have to go to the past to see where it came, where uh, we came, we come from, right? With regards to innovations in the life sciences. So um, in the past, actually, not that long ago, when thinking about innovation in life sciences, uh, most of the people um, is thinking or thought about um, or see it as being discovery driven, right? So that is the, the, the result of a scientific breakthrough that would represent the, the launching point no? for a major product development that is meaning uh, or resulting actually um, in uh, technology looking for application. No? And this is especially for, for the medical uh, device sector. However, uh, over the, the past two decades uh, and with the, with the spreading of design thinking no, across campuses and, and corporations, innovators actually uh, started to focus more on developing better, a deep, a deep understanding of the clinical needs um, as a starting point for the innovation process. No? Those uh, going or moving from a technological push to a technological pull approach, no? and especially in the biomedical technology sector. And actually, this is where um, biodesign uh, bio enters, right? So um, like nearly tw 20 years ago, um, biodesign emerged because uh, faculty at Stanford University, you know, um, they, they realized that despite their technological centers and uh, research institutes, they were like developing uh, many devices you know, in medtech um, when trying to look for an application of such technology in the real world, no suitable place uh, was found for them. So meaning that there was not really the need for such devices or inventions to so this, why they had to go uh, to uh, detect, you know, or they realize that the innovation in, in healthcare should be need driven, um, that is through the identification of an unmet clinical need rather than discovery driven. No? That um, it was like how it had been done since then, until then. So the system that that way um, you would ensure that, or oh, it's more probable that your that, that your solution, that device, the invention that you are um, that you have developed would be more uh, successful. No, that you will have more probably though this invention will be integrated in the system. So yeah, let me give you a couple of examples of this, no, with what I am explaining to you. So um, technological solutions develop um, though way before biodesign was, no, uh, the, the Stanford faculty like sit down and write it down, but um, based on these principles. So for instance, um, uh, let me give you an example from, from 1950. Uh, Sister Jean, Jean Ward, uh, which was the, the, a British nurse, nurse in charge of the premature nursery at the Rochford General Hospital in the UK. So she realized that those babies that uh, with jaundice that were exposed to sunlight in the world were those that uh, were better, better than those that weren't uh, receiving this. So this is how she realized that uh, by um, exposing those 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 babies to artificial light could be a way to 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 help those to help them so this is how actually photo phototherapy for young these babies was well emerged no another interesting uh, example of this vale is the case of Anita Dor, uh, another nurse, an ER nurse actually from uh, Mayer Memorial Hospital in the in the US that uh, realized that um, she could like uh, reduce the rate of, of, of she could improve their at attendance to uh, cardiorespiratory arrest patients no, that were arriving to the ER if she could have all the equipment necessary that she needed, like right beside her and in an easy and fast way to, to transport. So this is how she devised and she invented the crash cart, no, which actually is a, it's a, an invention that has saved many lives. So. These two examples are what I was explaining, you know, like how uh, from the day, 
this, uh, they detected these unmet clinical needs, things that were um, not going well in their day-to-day -day routine at the, at the hospital. And this is what biodesign does, and this is how it, it, it was created, no? as a systematic uh, methodology to healthcare innovation based, based on a need-driven approach, and it's divided in three phases or stages. You will start by identifying an unmet clinical need during a clinical immersion, by then developing a viable technological solution to address such need, and finally, a business model uh, in order to implement such solution in the, in the market, no? so, to, so it arrives to the patient. And based on this, Stanford University also created the Biodesign Fellowship to train new innovators no? within this, this approach. Uh, yeah, and this is what we have been doing in, in BioCAT uh, since 2013, so it's seven years uh, now, um, when we launched D-Health, inspired in the, in the Stanford uh, Fellowship to develop uh, future entrepreneurs and leaders in healthcare innovation. And today you are going to experience this, <laughs> but in a... a what the fellows of D-Health experience in six months, you will experience in one hour, <laughs> okay? So to do that, you will experience the full cycle of innovation. So from the identification to the development of the solution, and finally the business model, um, we will work in three, different, in three different groups that will be led by one of us, myself, uh, Raquel and Judith. And well, this is a little bit uh, the, the setting up. So um, ideally, uh, during the program, this exercise, no, we all, the, the experience is lived within whilst working in a in a small room of three to uh, in a small room, it's a small uh, group of from three to to four students, no, so they can um, develop the, the experience, the whole process. But of course, today we're going to do it. Um, each one of you will will do this process. And what do you need? Um, just. Um, pen and paper, if you don't have it, uh, you can use, I have also posted here a link to a whiteboard, online free whiteboard that you can use if you if you need it. But above all, you need like open your mind, um, biodesign needs, needs for create creativity. So when you are like identifying the needs and thinking about the solution, um, defer judgment, um, go for those, um, like don't discard those uh, wild ideas, but always stay, stay focused on the topic. So yeah, Nuria, um, if you want to, yes. So see you all. I didn't know what I could do outside of academia. I didn't know what I would enjoy, uh, which skills I can even offer um, and where to start. And uh, I thought I have to do some training. I have to do a master, I have to do do I have to do an MBA? I wasn't really sure where to go to. And then I came across the D-Health program. And I really decided to, uh, to do that because I really like, it's very practical. Okay, can you still hear me? Uh, so basically, that's, uh, so I did last year the D-Health program. And it, was a, it was a really great experience. I mean, it was intense, but uh, I, I, I really enjoyed um, the challenges and we'll come to that later. And then I uh, finished the D-Health program last year. And now my career path, I think, looks a bit like this. Uh, before it was very streamlined with breaks. Now I think it's like, I'm trying to do many things and still trying to find where to go. So currently I'm working as an application scientist at a company that develops optical tweezers. And I was actually working on a project to assess the business opportunity of the technology in preclinical development. Besides that, I'm doing different courses and participate in hackathons to also get more training in, uh, to, because I would like to move more towards healthcare innovation. Um, yes, and what the D health course basically for me, um, well, these are some, some things to reflect on. So I think I really like the exposure to see patients. I think there was something really impressive at the time in the hospital to be there to serve, really see the needs that exist. Um, uh, yes, I think there was also how complex the healthcare system is. There are so many different stakeholders involved to really try to understand what 
and very challenging. Um, then I really like the way of working. So I think the way I trained as a scientist was like, you know, I wanted to understand everything to make decisions, and it was like, no. And you fail fast and cheap. And I think that was uh, challenging, but I really like that way of working. Um, making iterations, um, this kind, so basically changing the working style. I think that was something uh, very good learning for me uh, and complementary to more my scientific training. Um, what I really loved, well, uh, liked also was the teamwork. So there's a strong focus on teamwork, but I realized I also never really worked on the team. And um, with all the mentoring and coaching we had, I think that was really, I really enjoyed that part. Uh, I think it really helps in working with others. Um, yes, and basically what I wanted to share it. Um, I hope, uh, I hope it was uh, interesting and good. So let's move to James. Okay, so James is also a former fellow from the Health Barcelona. He was uh, working at, at ICFO, right? When before the program, and she and ICFO is also part of, of the of um, she was working at ICFO. And James um, right now has developed his own company, so he is an entrepreneur. Uh, <laughs> uh, so please um, go ahead, James. Okay. Thank you very much for being here and sharing your experience with all of us. Cool. Thank you, Judith. Um, so yeah, as Judith says, I'm, I was originally from ICFA. Well, originally, originally I'm from the UK and I did my PhD there at the University of Cambridge in physics, specifically in nanophotonics, um, from quite a basic research type of position. And so then I came over to ICFO to do my first postdoc, um, which lasted a few years there. And I really loved uh, physics. I still love physics. And I really love the basic research side. But at the same time, I had this desire to do something more applied where I could see the impact of what I was doing in people's lives. And that's something which is hard to see in basic research when maybe what you're doing will come into technology in 20 years down the line. So I, after a lot of hesitating, I was slowly losing my motivation to do research. Um, so at some point I decided, right, okay, let's, let's leave research. And then I faced the problem of, of, wow, what do I do now? So a lot of physicists maybe would, if they leave research, is to go into industry. Um, but industry didn't really attract me in any way. I just thought it as kind of, you know, a big organization and you're still a tiny part. And some of the things I valued about the academic side is the, your freedom to, to do what, what you want to make your, your impact on the world. Um, so I kind of wanted to do something like that. And there didn't seem to be any opportunities for what I wanted in Barcelona doing that. So I decided to, I went to Google and I thought about things that, that I, I liked apart from physics. And so I, I was really passionate about design. I was really interested in health at that time. And, um, and I wanted to stay in Barcelona. So I literally wrote design health and Barcelona into Google and I pressed enter. And of course this course is called that. <laughs> so it came up and I was surprised to see that such a thing existed. I didn't really have a clue what it was, but I started investigating. And for me, it seemed like a perfect opportunity to really uh, learn about this healthcare innovation and to put myself in this sector and see what it's all about. So basically I, I took the plunge to, to do this um, in well last year. Um, and then I thought what I do now is to share maybe a couple of my main kind of learnings from that, that process. This is like our first day in the hospital. And for me, that's one of the, the best things about this uh, program is you get to be inside a hospital and you, you know, you have your lab coat on, you are pretty much treated like a doctor. Um, and you can basically, we could basically go anywhere uh, in the hospital, which was great. It was something I'd never seen before. 
and never really knew how a hospital worked. And so this was a huge, uh, interesting thing. And to watch doctors and nurses um, do their work was very inspiring. And there you can really see direct impact, right? They're saving people's lives. You meet the patient, as Petra was saying, uh, and you can see this, this change and, and huge impact that they're having. So that was, that was very motivating. And this is, my, this is our, our team that, that went to the hospital. So as I said, you like, you're sharing your space with the doctors and we were really with them throughout the whole normal day. And so this is the eight o'clock meeting they have every morning. And we, were part, we participated in that meeting every morning and we heard about what patients' uh, problems had, what, how they were gonna solve it. And you really formed a part of the medical team, although we weren't <laughs> treating any patients, obviously. So you really kind of observed uh, what problems they had. And this is where we were writing all these problems down like, like you were doing, um, well, to find, identify the problems that patients and the medical professionals face. So we were even there at the weekends, sometimes sleeping overnight. So this is our makeshift bed because they didn't have a bed for us. So we made one in the doctor's office. Um, and basically this was to follow them throughout their day. And on the right, you see where we are in a, some surgeries. So you really are everywhere a doctor goes. And you are really seeing every single need that they have and able to write them down and then later turn that into a solution. So that was very inspiring to be there. Then we saw some of the needs we found in the hospital. We got the chance to write a report and present that back to hospital management and key people in the hospital. And this really inspired me because, you know, you're doing a master's and you think, what can I, a physicist, tell a doctor who's been doing it all their life about how to run their hospital? Um, but you really see that the, we see things from a different point of view. So you're in this multidisciplinary team and together you see things which doctors have never even thought as a problem. And this was really shown where we could present back to the doctors and they go, oh yes, okay, yeah, that's really good. We've never thought about that. And let's look at how we can incorporate it. So that was really like showing, oh, we can have value in this. We're not just a, a scientist. <laughs> um, and then as Petra mentioned as well, teamwork is like one of the hardest things. And this is the whole, the whole year. I, until this uh, course, I thought I was quite good in the team. Um, and then you do this and you realize I've never really worked in a, in a multidisciplinary team. And this is a big learning curve. Sounds easy, but it's not. <laughs> um, the course gave you lots of kind of activities and, and help from even a psychologist to help you deal with these issues. But you have a team of, of four people in, in your mini team and you're all from very different backgrounds, probably different countries, different education levels, everything and you realize that everyone sees the world in a very different way and this can cause lots of conflicts um, but once you can work through these conflicts and work out this change of mentality you can use that together and it becomes your strength and so a lot of the course was about how you can turn um, something from a conflict into something very positive and that was definitely i've learned about working in teams in a completely different way to what i thought was working in a team from before you do lots of creative approaches, very different from uh, I was used to in academia, at least. Um, I've never seen so many post-it notes in my life um, and using them on posters on the wall, drawing things on the ground. I don't know, we had so many creative approaches given to us in the course. And this again, uh, helps you work in a team and helps you understand the problem from different points of view. And it was quite refreshing to deal with a very different approach to solving problems. Here we are again uh, in the hospital, trying to, I don't know, sort through <laughs> that day's thoughts. Um, and then this, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult work. Um, it's very different from the kind of work in academia, which is also very difficult. This is very difficult in a different way. And this is kind of one example. Um, so we came up with around 500, over 500 needs in our team uh, through our hospital immersion. And then you have to try and put them in order and you do various things numerically. And we had big spreadsheets and, and sorting it all out, but it's very hard to do to, to base these kind of things into an order. And so this is not even, I think this is like 
150 needs or something on the wall. And this is us trying to sort them and categorize them. And again, it's this work together, which makes all this very hard, um, but very rewarding when you finally get to a result. And there's a lot of late nights as well, where we, our office, the, the lights actually were cut off in the evening, <laughs> um, but we wanted to keep working. So we had these kind of little candle things to try and keep, uh, keep us working even when the electricity went off. So, they were long days uh, of intense struggle as a team, but it but it was it was very fun. And an, another big thing for me then is what um, this program provides is this, this contact and network. So on the left hand side is maybe a couple of I mean there's many more things than this, but some of the key elements um, of networking in, in the course. Um, and this really connected me to a completely new sector. So I didn't know anyone in healthcare uh, before. Uh, this course now I know like <laughs> I, can't, I can't even think how many people across different hospitals in Barcelona and now I feel really part of the healthcare system and that's amazing kind of achievement from being a, a postdoc in physics to suddenly knowing like most of the health ecosystem in Barcelona and and in Europe and then from that network you can build on your network so since the course and we've managed to take our idea to different kind of networks in, in European accelerators, back in the Barcelona city, uh, and in other, start, in other um, accelerator programs. So this network keeps growing, and, and the Mobio D Health course gave a good foundation of that network. So without which I don't think I would even know how to enter into the healthcare market. And basically all this has it gave us the impetus to really uh, keep going with our idea after the course. And so we founded uh, Breeze, uh, which has the aim of detecting breathing diseases early. And so this for me was like a massive success. So we started, I started the course as a, as a postdoc, didn't have any idea about healthcare. The course gave me all these skills and tools um, and provided me with experiences, which allowed me, me to detect a real need and begin to solve a, a solution to that need. And with that, it gave me the confidence after the course to keep it going forward and to form a, a business, a startup, and try and make that a reality. Now, there's a lot more problems of making a startup, which you learn out, outside the course, uh, and this is a constant journey. But at least it gave me kind of a, a, a way of looking at the world, which is very different, and to allow me to take that first step um, to try and make my new career a reality. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Jane, for sharing your experience with us. That was great. And also, Petra, I sorry because I had the problem and I had to jump in again to, to the call. So thank you, Julian, for for helping me. Okay, so um, before we go to the Q and A, let me like give to all of you like a brief brief introduction to the program, and then we can like discuss until the the end of the session. Great. So yeah, the Health Barcelona is a consolidated postgraduate program, six month postgraduate program that it, as I told you at the very beginning, is it inspired in the biodesign uh, fellowship developed by, by Stanford University like nearly 20 years ago. And the main goal of it is to train, uh, to develop entrepreneurs and leaders in healthcare innovation. So basically the program invites the participants to, um, to experience the full cycle of innovation uh, by identifying a business need through uh, the detection of an admit clinical need uh, in a, in a, during a clinical immersion in one of the top hospitals of the area of Barcelona in a specific clinical area. Uh, by after that, inventing a novel technology to address such solution, such need, and finally designing a business model no, to implement such solution in the, in the market successfully, of course. So in order to achieve that, um, our fellows will receive, um, as James and Petra were saying, no, a, a wide variety of, of uh, lectures and seminars and workshops in different topics from the basic introduction to, to healthcare systems and, and basic concepts of, of medicine, business, product development, but also, and it is very important for us, uh, we also train or we also help our fellows improve on this um, set of soft skills that we believe that are super, super crucial to, to, became, to become uh, a successful uh, entrepreneur, so including 
in working skills, negotiation skills, presentation skills, etc. But of course, I would say that I would dare to say that the, the most important or the most important part of our program is the, the clinical immersion, no? the, 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 the shadowing that the, that the teams do in order to identify these unmet clinical needs because it gave the, the opportunity you know, to blend into the day-to-day -day, uh, routine of the, of the hospital, interacting with the physicians, all the medical staff, the patients in order to detect you know, these, these uh, major challenges. So we can say that since we started in 2013, we have developed this amazing network of hospitals that are those that you see here at the bottom of the slide. All of them top notch hospitals that host the teams every every year. Uh, and I would say that more than that, they live with, with them the, fu the full cycle of innovation, of course. So these are a brief um, summary of the, the outcomes of the seven editions. So we have been lucky enough to train 71 new NEED-led innovators. Um, we have uh, been working in 15 different clinical areas since the very beginning. Uh, we have accelerated 15 projects. Four of them are still ongoing and one of them is already in the, in the market. So this is like a slide with, the, with the, the clinical areas our fellows have been doing their immersion. So as you can see, we have covered, uh, we can see that we have covered the full spectrum of healthcare. And yeah, this slide is just to emphasize how disrupting um, our educational model is in the sense that this is not the typical master in which your postgraduate program in which you look, go to class, take notes and do an exam. So basically because we are like teaching you a process rather than subjects, you are working within a multidisciplinary team, you're not working as an individual. You are working on based on real life scenarios, and sometimes we also disrupt the how. In the sense that our, the fellows are the ones that are conducting the session and receiving the feedback from the from the experts, the mentors that they have during the program. So yeah, this is the the, the fellows that we seventy one, as I was telling you. Uh, but also one of our biggest achievement is that a ninety five percent of these fellows uh, find a job into the in the healthcare sector uh, relatively fast after finishing the program. So in the innovation um, sector, I mean, both in public and private um, companies. So I'm summarized here, but also. Um, also are the, the projects that have been accelerated no, by, the, by the program. So those four projects that you have here in, in gray, that are those that have been directly uh, emerged from the program as the, as the project, as the startup of James uh, and Alphonse, Brief. Uh, but of course, other um, projects that have emerged from the program, uh, not directly maybe, but that have been like founded uh, by fellows of the program that uh, they have developed with the skills um, and the knowledge that they gathered during the program. So yeah, just I want to finish by presenting you the three hospitals that are going to host the three teams of fellows uh, this year, next edition, sorry, uh, 2021, that is going to start in April and will finish in October. So also I want to, um, so diagnostic imaging, uh, gynecology and obstetrics and neurology. But also I want to, to present you uh, something new that we are going to do this year, which is that we are going to have a social track. And that means that one of the, one of the teams, and because we want to give the, the program, we want to start um, to, to, get, to have a social entrepreneurship approach. So one of the teams will do an immersion in a hospital in which the solution that they could uh, develop could uh, have a positive impact in a, in, a, in a collective people from underprivileged sectors or at this social exclusion. So this team will be the one that will do the immersion at the gynecology and obstetric service in, in German Strias y Pujols in Badalona. And yeah, finally, um, as I was telling you, next edition starts April the 9th um, and the application period will be open until mid-March. So for those that are thinking about enrolling uh, on the program, think no more, get on board. Um, also, because if you have been part of this webinar, uh, you will have a 10% discount on the tuition fee. For the, for the program. But also, as Nuria was saying, no, we have started this amazing collaboration with BIT this year. So uh, we are offering two, two slots uh, at 50% discount of the fee for, for uh, people, for researchers that come from any of the BIST members, uh, centers, sorry. So these are my, my contacts. Um, if you want to 
to get to know more of the program, you have here the website, you can download the brochure, but of course you are free to, to write me and we can have a call and chat about it. But yeah, I think that we can like um, finish this session with a little bit Q&A. I know if you have any question either for me, for James, for Petra, for Judith, for Nuria, what? Maybe you can use the chat to write down the, the questions. It will be easy yes. for us to, to read them. Again, um, I mean, I am more than willing to, I am going to write my, my, my email address actually. So if you want to contact me, it will be easier, but also I encourage you to, to check our website. Um, yeah. Any question? I can ask a question to James. Uh, I wanted to know what is your role in, in the company and uh, if you still are able to employ your physics background or how has it changed now? What do you do? Um, yeah, so I'm like taking on the more CEO leading the project role. Um, but in an early startup, you kind of have to do everything between whoever's in the, in the startup. Uh, so definitely every day I'm doing all sorts of different things from, I don't know, thinking about tax problems to uh, intellectual property problems to website to social media, every, everything you can think of. And um, this kind of goes, yeah, I guess it's, it's constantly evolving like the tasks every day. Um, but in terms of my physics, yes, I'm definitely still using it, at least some of what I've, I've learned through my postdoc. Um, so, I mean, I was an experimental physicist, so I had a lot of um, experience maybe on the more engineering side of building experiments and this kind of thing. And so this is definitely helping and I'm using it in, in building our, our, our hardware prototype because we are a hardware product. So I'm definitely using that side of it not directly anything to do with photonics, which is my <laughs> background and my scientific interest. So that was, I mean, that's one of the things like um, in this course, you start with the need and then you find the correct solution um, or, or the solution you think works. You don't start with a, a technology. So, I mean, if I, if I started with technology, I should have chosen a light technology and then tried to find the market. Um, and that's how a lot of spin-off companies work, right? They, you have this great technology, but you need to work out, can I use it anywhere in the real world? Um, but this is the opposite way around. So you start with what does the world really need? And then we must make it. Um, and unfortunately, ours doesn't include light. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, right? Great. I see that. The, thanks. Thanks, James. Um, I think that the, I am going to answer the questions that are being done in the chat. So Silvia Castagna asks uh, if you can choose the hospital. So um, this is one of the few things that uh, we as the, as the managing um, team of the, of the program uh, choose. Actually, uh, we don't uh, say anything uh, about which need are you going to work, about the solution, about the business model, but we uh, we decide, um, we create the teams. So we create this, these multidisciplinary teams uh, based on the different observations we do during the first part of the program, which is, is the bootcamp. And then we randomly assign the teams to the hospital. So the idea is that uh, you will go to a clinical area that you don't have to know anything. So you would not be biased and you will like be super open-minded to, to observe and, and make and um, see this, these needs. Um, could you give me some examples of different backgrounds in participants? So basically, you, we are looking for uh, four different profiles. So one would be the person that more um, into the life science sector. So here we are like, we're thinking about uh, clinicians, um, so physicians, nurses, uh, biotechnologists, biologists, biochemists, okay? And then we will have a second kind of profile that we are looking for, which is more engineering part, uh, biomedical engineers, physicists, no? <laughs> like, like James, um, industrial engineers. Then we are looking for uh, people with a background in business. Uh, and finally, people with a background in design. So uh, industrial designers, 
product designers, etc. So the idea is with that with this multidisciplinarity, we can like um, create the teams and um, yeah, ensure that the solution that they came up is the would be the most promising one, right? Um, and then uh, Dr. Goyal asked, what is the eligibility as well as what, uh, what is being looked at the selection of fellows, medical or clinical? So the, the criteria to participate in the program is that we are looking for this, like for specific roles, um, backgrounds. Um, and we are also looking for people that has like a, a, a graduate basically from a licenciatura. Uh, degree no it's like a, bac a bachelor's sorry sorry a bachelor's to me to um, so yeah and then after that we 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 have like this uh, application process in which we first will revise your your cv then we will like ask you to send us the the titles your degrees and also like a motivation to participate in a couple of essays and a video and finally you will have like a personal two personal interviews with uh, people with myself and other people of the committee the selection committee here at biocat Great. Okay. So yeah, as I was saying, you you have my my contact. You know the program. You can check the website, and if you need anything, you you want to talk about it more. So you would be more than welcome to to set a um, we'll set a call and, and and talk about it. Okay. Great. Perfect. Thank you very much uh, for your time. To, to James and Petra, Nuria, Raquel for, uh, for helping me organize this and Nuria, of course, for uh, giving us this time. It was a pleasure. Thank you, love you, Aurea. Thank you, Aurea. Have a nice afternoon. Bye. Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.